gracias por Thank you so much for attending the session and especially as well, of course, the 10th World Conference on Bioethics. The next presentation is um, very relevant. Environmental education is a permanent uh, progress. Our, our individuals are aware of the environment and acquire know-how, values, and experience, and also the willingness to make them capable to act to solve the current and future environmental problems. That's why environmental training and education is the best strategy to build up a better future without damaging the environment. So we're going to welcome here now Dr. Javier Cristobal Rodriguez. He is director of the Oceanographic Center of Gijón and the Spanish Institute of Oceanography. He comes here today with an important presentation entitled Environmental Education in the Marine Environment. And the moment is now. We will have uh, half uh, an hour for his presentation and then half an hour for Q&A. And then here with us is Mr. Jose Gonzalez Riaño, president of the Academy of the Asturian Language. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for attending this uh, session. As it was said, I work for the Oceanographic Center of Gijón and the Spanish Oceanographic Center, where now I am director. And first and foremost, thank you so much to the organizers of this uh, Congress, and especially thank you to Dr. Palacios and his team, because it is an honor for me to have been invited uh, representing the Oceanographic of Gijón to talk to you about environmental education and the marine environment. My presentation will be broken down into three parts. Uh, firstly, analysis of the marine environment right now, main problems faced. Uh, some of them have already been addressed by the previous speaker. I will also inform you about the potential solutions already mentioned by the previous speaker as well, and then talk about environmental education. And what I like is that this presentation encourages you to have some time for Q&A, some debate, and you may ask any, any question. And I will try to answer them. If you don't know how to answer questions, it will is the driver that moves our scientists uh, to continue researching to try to respond those, uh, to those concerns. Analysis of the current situation. Well, oceans are suffering from or facing the worst uh, moment in history because great places that we have, fantastic places, superb places, are being threatened. And you can see here different images illustrating the impact of environmental pollution, fishery in excess, uh, disasters that happen every now and then with uh, huge consequences. And this contrasts a little bit with the fact that right now we are living at a time of a great flow of information. Uh, we get information just uh, on the spur of the moment of something that has happened just two seconds ago. At the other end of the planet, so, uh, social media <laughs> allows us to have um, true information, or almost true, because there is also fake news, of course. But we have uh, a spontaneous and instant in, um, information of whatever is happening worldwide. There was a moment, uh, at a moment when satellite information gets to us, reaches us very fast. We have uh, ships of first level for studies, 
and service. We have working tools that are excellent, for example, some even robots that allow us allowed to go down 6,000 or 8,000 meters down the ocean to do some research, even sledges. And that is great, uh, physical oceanography that measures the parameters of the whole ocean, ocean in real time, mapping, oceanographic mapping, that is very important. Right? We did not used to have all that mapping before. And now we have real data, or maybe the study of biodiversity, which is so important as well for us and our planet. So the capacities, the power we have is great in terms of information yeah, and in real time. I was lucky to participate in a scientific expedition on a ship called Nautilus that belongs to Robert Bala, the one who discovered the Titanic, going down to 6,000 meters and real time at the other end of the planet by satellite, they could be looking at what we were looking 6,000 in depth, meters in depth. There were some coordinators of this activity, and anywhere in the world they could ask us any question up to the minute, and we could answer that question, even tell them the species that we were looking at down there. So this technology is very important. It is giving us information not only to the scientists, but also to anyone who is interested in these studies or surveys. Another serious concern already addressed by the previous speaker is the presence of plastics, macroplastics that we see every day on our beaches and also the micro uh, plastics and the impact of those pollutants on the marine environment, fishery, or maybe on other populations that live down the sea. We have to be aware of the fact that any pollutant reaching our beaches, well, we may think that the sea is magic. You throw something into the water, you stop seeing that thing, that object, and you think that the problem has disappeared, vanished. No, that is when the problem really starts. Anything that is foreign to the marine environment and you throw into the sea will face a degradation process. Eh? The sea um, has a buffering effect of those pollutants, but we've reached a point in which the sea cannot just absorb everything we are throwing into it, and it is not magic anymore, and any object you throw into the sea will have an impact on uh, marine ecosystems and populations. Just to give you some examples. This was done by one of my colleagues at the Oceanographic Center in Gijón. And it may give you an idea of all the rubbish reach in our beaches and coastlines. And you can see how long many of those objects will take to degrade. Uh, some cartoon, some hard uh, paper, a month, but a plastic bottle 200, 400 years, or many other everyday objects. Uh, uh, reach the oceans at any time. A clear example happened not a long time ago. On a beach, someone found this package of uh, yogurt from the Montreal Olympic Games 46, in 1946. So 40 something years later, the yogurt package was still there. Anything that reaches the sea has a great impact. Many times, Large mammals are affected, the plankton as well, all the marine ecosystems on the coastline are also down in depth. And you have to think that all the pollutants we are throwing into the sea, any exogenous uh, material we introduce in the marine environment will become a pollutant for marine ecosystems, even if it is organic. 
from the pipelines or switch systems, switch uh, uh, systems, or if it is fuel or whatever. These pollutants in the marine environment may have a lethal effect, that is, they kill some organisms straight away. Something that gets in contact with bleach or fuel may die, but sometimes they are at lower amounts without that lethal e um, effect, but rather sub-lethal. That is, it affects the organism, the capacity of reproduction or breathing, not killing the subject, but causing a negative impact and harmful impact on those species. And that happens with heavy metals, heavy metals that reach the marine environment Sometimes they do not kill the smallest uh, organisms like plankton, but they accumulate it, and the whole atrophic uh, chain feeding from those organisms will accumulate it. And the great predators have greater uh, concentrations. It is also important what was mentioned by the previous speaker, the rubbish that reaches the seas every day. That's why environmental education and dissemination is very important. And also control of that waste. An example given also by the previous speaker, Boyanislav, I will not uh, go into detail. But this is one of the best examples of what we can do. He was only 20 years of age, imagine. And I think this should have been done by governments or states, not the ones that should be concerned about this situation. This does not mean that it is less important, but rather that there are always solutions. And the moment is now. We have to act now. Why? Because we are inheriting a planet, and we will not be able to leave it better than we inherited it. And until not long time ago, many of the problems or pollutants or the situations that were occurring when we inherited this planet, they had a solution. But now we are facing such a degree of impact on the marine environment that many times there will be no solution. I'm not just talking about pollution. I'm talking also about impact on the coastline that is irreversible. Sometimes it is a contradiction, the fact that scientists have fantastic tools and methodologies to research the marine environment. And however, we will not be able to defend it from the aggression, severe aggression. So every day, new species of seaweeds, marine invertebrated animals uh, are discovered, and many others are disappearing, vanishing, because environmental conditions are changing drastically. You do not really have to go to the tropical areas with um, some beautiful coral reefs here on the coastline in Asturias. We also have them. So scientists have first-hand information, but we also have to act. And many times, it is not only responsibility of scientists or politicians, but rather the solution is in our hands, in your hands. At the center where I work, the Oceanographic Center of Gijón, we have some days when we welcome everyone. Everyone is welcome. Think that we are regarded with the world population as a pest because uh, uh, the population worldwide has increased so much that the situation is out of control. And subsequently, the impact on the environment is greater and greater, and the waste is also greater. But what can we do? 
leave it all in the hands of the governments, the states, and politicians? Well, yes, but not only. I'm going to share with you some examples to illustrate some situations or actions like that of uh, Boyan, but others as well. And what can I do to use less plastic, for example, in my everyday life? The plastic is one of the greatest pollutants. Everything you buy, you use. Not to buy, for example, fruit that is packaged, previously packaged, to take your bag to the supermarket to carry your shopping, not only because you will save money, but also because you are working towards the environment. Somebody mentioned about the legislation um, of the future, in the near future not to use, uh, I don't know, a straw, a plastic straw, a plastic bag that you use at the airport to, to, I don't know, for whatever thing. In 10 minutes later, you throw it away and you do not see it anymore. And the environmental impact of that of, of those plastics are is great. So what can I do? Use less plastic. There are many examples I can give you. Uh, if you smoke, for example, do not throw away the the cigarette end on the beach because that's horrible. No, or done on the ocean. There are solutions for that. You can't reduce the impact with the small gestures, and you do not need to do much. I have a little nephew. Now he's already 12 years of age, but when he was little, the first thing he did when we went to the beach was to pick up all the plastic we found in that little uh, beach. We used to pick up everything and we used to put it in a bag. And he used to say, why do we have to do it? And I said, well, because tomorrow when we come, the beach will be clean for us and for the others, and that will not be pollutant. Then he started to do it alone, and I thought it was a way of educating him. Uh, I am taken aback when I see a father with a little girl, and the little girl already knows that the paper on the floor has to be thrown onto the uh, bin, into the bin. And that is education as well, because all the contamination and pollution in the marine environment comes from the Earth environment, no, the restaurant environment. That's where we have to work on, um, scientists, politicians, people who have responsibilities, and people who bet on quality with a greater, on a, on a greater quality of the environment. We've also seen examples of not to throw things into the toilet or other gestures, for example, the meshes, not to throw them into the environment because they will end up in the oceans. Uh, many species may be trapped by those meshes, the microplastics, uh, cosmetics, many of the clothes we wear. For example, the flea jackets, they have microplastics. When they are degraded, they have an impact on the marine environment. And there are many studies that have demonstrated that those microplastics are being incorporated into the organic matter of many materials, and therefore a trophic chain. And the problem is not only that it reaches the human being and we consume it, but also that the environment is being impacted by these pollutants. Therefore, we scientists have to disseminate accurate information, know what is happening, and say it out loud. Publish all these officially organized conferences. Be here, attend conferences, work with others, and listen to someone who has something to say, eh, the speakers today, the speakers yesterday, that is also a way of helping that environment. Most of the pictures I have shown during my presentation were taken by the 
by the team of Gijón, and I'd like to thank very much my team at the Oceanographic Center for devoting part of the time to dissemination. If you visit this website, you will see that there are news published by our own information, news on the center, but also other places worldwide where they talk about environmental education, the way to to move on, and what to do not to continue causing a negative impact on the environment. That is all from me. Thank you very much, and I hope that you have found my presentation useful. And if I can answer any of your concerns or your questions, I will be more than happy. Thank you. We could start now the time for Q&A. Well, thank you very much to Dr. Javier for this interesting presentation. And now the floor is yours. Anyone would like to break the ice? Buenos días. Muchas gracias. Good morning. Thank you very much, Javier. I am Sonia from the school La Corolla. Do you think that uh, words like Cydia or Princess of Asturias may help underscore this concern, foundations such as Miss and Blue have an important impact on public opinion. Uh, the fact of acknowledging many of the works and projects and actions implemented, do you think that may raise awareness among us? Thank you so much. Undoubtedly. Of course, awards uh, talking about the work done by a researcher on the marine environment is a way of underscoring uh, and, and give uh, light to something that is being done. Uh, cultural associations are also working. We have to work in different spheres. Sometimes the scientist is only working as a notary, you know, uh, explains something, publishes whatever is being done, and then all of a sudden an award arrives. Uh, that is very important. Before Eva, uh, Eva was here, uh, she was also awarded with an important award. And it is good uh, to get those awards. But uh, the important thing about those awards means that, oh my god, you've been given this award because of this or that. Oh, I didn't know about this. So that uh, action or that plan may be very important. For example, not many people n know us at the Oceanographic Center of Gijón. They do know us worldwide, but uh, maybe not here in a local level or in Spain. And uh, when some of our um, uh, collaborators are given an award, uh, that means that they will get to know you better. All those scientists that have many data just uh, kept in a draw, that is not useful. Eh? You have to disseminate it. The poster I shared with you before on the marine rubbish uh, you can take it from the Facebook website. It's an example of something that is simple. And many schools uh, asked us for this poster. Why? Because it is worth it. The recent award, Prince of Asturias Award, given to an oceanographic expert. What it does, it underscores the work they are doing, but what is good is that it is disseminating our work worldwide. Uh, Hello, 
Hello, good morning. Firstly, I'd like to thank you for your presentation. I wanted to say uh, tell you an anecdote and then a question. Seventeen years have now gone by since a terrible accident that occurred on the Galicia coast when the Prestige boat um, had an, uh, was shipwrecked and the oil spilled out into the sea. And it, what drew our attention is how the young people, older people, got together to help clean up the coast. And why, when a disaster such as this occurs, don't the multinational companies do something? And as the individuals who do so, where are the laws, where are the regulation, the criteria related to safety, security, to guarantees, the safe transport of uh, something that at that time destroyed many forms of uh, life in a paradise such as that with the oil spill. I was, uh, we were students at that time at the university, and many of my colleagues I know went to uh, Galicia to help cleaning up the beaches and the coastline. My question is the following. Are the safety rules, standards, are they complied with? Or is it something that is more fictitious than real? Well, I think uh, you've hit the nail on the head. The legislation does exist. But often the legis international legislation make things go so slowly that they aren't as and effective as they should be. What you've said about the prestige is a reality. And if it occurs again, I think that even though we've learnt from what occurred, the things haven't changed so much. The environment uh, regulations have made some progress, but I don't think they sh there are some lagoons. There are some insurances, for example, the fishermen that uh, couldn't fish at that time and have lost a lot. Well, the money the has been they have been paid money by councils and uh, associations etc and they've only received the money from the insurance years later when things have been uh, checked and verified i was lucky that i i um, am very familiar with that paradise because uh, I have, I live, or I used to live rather in a village called Aris, which is very nearby. And so I've uh, seen three accidents of oil uh, tankers, containers, and the Montecula, the Marejeo, and the Prestige. So I'm very familiar with all of this. And it's still, my hair stands on end still when I think about uh, how we've com committed the same mistakes three times. What didn't happen with the Murkiola and the Marajeo with respect to the prestige is there been a social movement, young people who have responded and the means uh, the, uh, the army or whatever, it's part of their work. And their work was uh, reinforced by a white tide that you've described very well. And we have managed in that way to reduce the impact on the coast. And this response by the people who mobilized, uh, got going, and was vital for the uh, impact not to be greater. We have learned something. There's more awareness now about the sea and its environment. But you still get the impression, as you said, that the laws, the legislation, although it does exist, isn't going to immediately respond to such an important action as uh, prestige, marejeo, whatever. Thank you very much for your question. Any more questions? Yes, over there. Hello, good morning. 
Congratulations for your presentation. Very clear. My name is Beatriz. I'm from Riva de Sella and the Institute. And we've got a very a beautiful beach surrounding area. I would like to know how much do the councils get involved in disseminating what you've mentioned, educating the citizens, and if these uh, councils are in contact with the oceanographic of Gijón. Well, the oceanographic always tries to provide aid, support, when it is contacted, one of the great unknowns. We do a lot of research, uh, fisheries, we, the university. But when they contact us, we try to help in what we can by way of conferences, dissemination of information, studies that the students want to carry out, and we provide any available information. On the, we've got information on the website. We've got a good relationship with the uh, Gijón City Council, a very active uh, relationship. And we also have an agreement and villages, towns with less uh, population do get in contact with us at times because they want to organize an event and we help them do it. And then these are published in the news or in the newspaper. And we go with it and do give a conference providing information. So when we everybody calls us or rings us, we we um, do go where we can. There was a scientific expedition to the Arctic uh, not very long ago when we were busy. And somebody rang and said, can you do this? And we always say yes, even though we're busy. Even though there are only a few of us, there's only 35, 40 of us. The scientists are working on their projects, but we always try to reach everybody and everything. The schools, for example, who've asked to help in an activity, the manufacturer of a microscope, a visit to uh, the oceanographic, third, fourth week in November, we have an open doors, the schools come, and as a result of those visits, conferences arise, or students who write to us to say that they want to do a study on plankton. And if we can provide them with information, we are always there for anybody. Even though we are busy, we try to do the best we can. The schools, small co city councils, town councils. And we've uh, got a very good, I say, relationship with Gijón. And uh, what we can't do, the city council of Gijón does. Not very long ago, I went to a World Congress on marine uh, biology in Galway Island, and one of the scientists said something which uh, affected me. Better than competing, we should collaborate. So the daily work of uh, scientists is to compete, to publish, to reach a higher tier. And often you keep data because you want to publish them later on. But if you collaborated with other scientists, giving them, providing them with that data, those data, maybe you can help. So that was a uh, sentence impacted me, affected me, and we are trying to collaborate whenever we can. We rarely say no, even though we are snowed down with work, we try to help because we know that uh, that is expected of us. So we always say yes whenever we can. Any other questions? Well, the, the doctor C 
Cristobal Rodriguez has uh, given us uh, great information, fantastic information. And as your presentation says, now is the time. Do you want to add something, Doctor? I would like to thank uh, Javier Cristobal for his intervention and congratulate all of you for your interest and uh, attention paid to the topic. Thank you very much, then. Thank you.